Whenever you're ready. Or... All right. Call this regular meeting of the Board of Education to order. Roll call. Robert Holland. Nathaniel Melton. Yes. Present. Kate McKinney. Yes. Deb Olson. Yes. Aaron Birch. Here. Hey, Aaron. Yeah, did you hear? Did you hear me? Yeah. If everybody mutes their mics, we won't get as much background noise except for the person speaking. Paul Johnson. Present. I think the background noise is Nathaniel. If you would all stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of America, to the republic for which it is the nation, one nation under God, under God is indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the agenda. Make a motion we approve the agenda the way it's written. Kate will second. In favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Would it be easiest to do a roll call vote for each vote going forward? Yes, it would be easiest if you would do a roll call vote for each vote. Okay, thank you. So we'll be moving on to the consent agenda. And I'll entertain a motion that we approve the consent agenda, which contains the Board of Education minutes from 316, the public hearing minutes from 46, and the Board Committee of the Whole minutes from 46, as well as the approval of vouchers. This is Paul. I'll make that motion. This is Marcia. I'll second. Caitlin, if you want to do a roll call vote, please. Robert Holland. Nathaniel Melton. Yes. Nathaniel. Yes, yes. Thank you. Kate McKinney. Yes. <laughs> Deb Olson. I saw her say yes, but she's muted. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Aaron Bird. Yes. Marcia Schurz? Yes. Paul Johnson? Yes. We will be moving on to the information session. Uh, item A is board member recognition. All right. So tonight we're recognizing two outgoing school board members as they come up on the ends of their terms. Robert Holand has served on the school board for seven years, uh, starting in April 2013. During Robert's term of service, he has served in multiple school board officer positions. Karen Birch has served on the school board for four years, beginning her service in September 2016. Karen is the current school board president. We thank Mr. Holland and Mrs. Birch for their service to the students, families, staff and the community of Spooner. Thank you very much. Join me in a round of applause, please. Thank 
you, everyone. It's been an honor, and I know that Robert would say the same if he was here. So thank you. Appreciate it. We're moving on to board reports. So. I'm going to save from memory because I can't get my can't do much in the computer while I'm on here. I don't know how. So um, we had a limited number of board members and just skeletal crew at the building because we weren't um, encouraging community and staff to come into the building. We were. We had just adopted a resolution for um, the waiver for minutes, as well as educator effectiveness and the civic um, portion of graduates. We suspended community comments on policies so that we could do this virtual meeting um, tonight. And that um, policy can be amended in the future by the board if they choose to. And let's see if I can get back there. Anybody think of anything I'm missing? Well, we also considered employee compensation plan for hourly employees um, during this public health emergency, which we approved. And we looked at an update on the a financial update from Ms. Grindel. Any additional information to add? All right. We'll be moving on then to administrative report. All right, so some official election results to report on the Board of Canvassers met on April 16th in the school district conference room. And uh, congratulations go out to Nathaniel Melton with 2,172 votes. Jepson with 2,035 votes. And Megan Benson Morrow was 60 right so congratulations to Daniel and Michelle and Megan. In addition to the school board election, there was a referendum going on and the referendum was, uh, did pass, uh, 1,790 yes votes, 1,342 no votes. So the referendum uh, was successful. Dr. Asplund, thank you for your leadership. Uh, my pleasure. Thanks a lot. It was a, really a great team effort. Uh, we thank the community very much for their support of this referendum. And thank you to everybody who worked hard on it. Yes, great job. Thank you. So we've been, uh, school's been closed for a month now. During this month, we've had uh, many teachers working to uh, provide extensions of the learning in place before the shutdown and enrichment. Uh, late last week with uh, the governor's order, uh, Act 185, now we know, unfortunately, that our schools will not, our, our students will not be back in the classroom with their teachers for the remainder of the 2019-20 school year. Uh, over the past weeks, uh, teachers and support staff have been hard at work preparing for instruction that we now know will go on until the end of the school year. At this point, Mrs. Birch, I'd, I'd ask you to call out each of the principals and they can provide a little bit of information about um, teaching and learning in their buildings. Okay, thank you. We'll start with Mr. Scherz at the high school. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, we've been uh, working pretty hard at developing curriculum. Um, it's gone really well. I think our teachers uh, are at least point satisfied with what they've developed and we've uh, sent out seven weeks of information either uh, Google Classroom, uh, use the use of a flash drive or uh, actually uh, paper pencil packets that were all sent out last week. So uh, day one is in the books and um, I think I had one or two parents that needed a few items which we uh, got to them, and I haven't heard anything but uh, positive remarks since. Great. Thank you for that update. Anyone have any questions? Okay, we'll move on to Mrs. Cobdy at the middle school. Hi there. Can you hear me? All right. Well, before we for the shutdown, teachers provided students with work. Um, and since the closure, uh, teachers have been checking in on students' mental health and checking in on the academics that they sent home. Um, they have been continuing, and in many cases, finished choosing their power standards and unpacking those power standards. They also created uh, unit plans for quarter four, complete with assessments. Um, and they had both contingencies, whether um, we would be planning for remote learning or whether we would be back in school. Um, and our paraprofessionals have assisted teachers with putting together student materials and assisted with Chromebook and material distribution. Thank you. Any questions for Mrs. Cobdy? We'll be new. Moving on to Mr. Hopke at the elementary school. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to uh, say that there's a lot, lot of uh, stuff that was basically repeating a lot of the same stuff, you know, as far as mental health and, and building the academics. Uh, other things that, that my staff were involved in were uh, really trying to get a finger on who had uh, internet availability as well as uh, devices for students to use uh, during this closure time, uh, making sure that they're connecting with those, connecting those families with resources or other people that they might need to make contact with. Um, they've been sending out postcards, letters to students, you know, providing that additional support. Uh, we set up the Google Classrooms for uh, grades three and four, and we provi provided uh, flash drives and packets for remote learning. Uh, the packets were for K2 and then also for uh, some students that did not have internet access. Uh, and then we've been meeting as uh, virtually uh, as teams and, and making sure that we're cohesive in, in what we're providing uh, families and students. And then as far as the paraprofessionals, if I can add on, they've been involved in, in the meal deliveries three times a week, uh, going out to families. And they've been involved with some of the, the phone calls and academic support for students with disabilities as well. So, I have a question. Can I answer? Can I ask a question, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, and this probably goes out to all of you, um, whether it's Dennis or Michelle or or Pete, in this time where we are, you know, sending this information home. How are you? Are you keeping track that the students are doing what they need to be doing or or trying to do what they need to do to keep on task to go into the next year? Roger that. I know uh, for our level, uh, I've got it that's that uh, teachers are making weekly contacts with families, you know, checking on progress and student um, student learning. I know it's gonna be a little bit easier with those that have internet access because we can get information uh, through our platforms, whether it's Google Classroom for grades three and four, or some teachers at the lower levels are using Seesaw, which uh, parents can provide pictures of, of student work and we can get that progress. So it's continually weekly that teachers are checking in with students to see how they're doing. Okay, thank you. So, so we did the same things at the middle school. 
Um, teachers are making weekly phone calls. So every student in the building gets a phone call every week. Uh, the students that have internet access will also be checked in through Google Classroom. Uh, and also our teachers are holding office hours. Every teacher has two hours of office hours every day where students can call and ask any question or just check in. Okay, great, thank you so much. So, so I guess what I would like to do is make uh, this challenge perfectly clear. Um, we are certainly relying on parents to be involved in that process because we have we virtually have no way to uh, have our normal accountability. And uh, at the high school, uh, and I think I mentioned this early on, that that uh, we, we have a group of students that even with the support of our staff at school and face-to-face -face instruction have difficulty with that process. So this is a, a challenge. And if you look statewide or even nationally, um, there's about a 30 Oh. Um, uh, situation where students are absent from required to do. So with that, I guess we're going to monitor it uh, on a regular basis. I put out a challenge to my teachers uh, today to, you know, uh, again, make contact uh, frequently with your students. And if you, uh, you know, uh, certainly through emails and parental phone calls. And I guess we'll uh, evaluate it uh, we weekly to see where we are. Uh, again, we're still having uh, trouble making connections to certain students and e even finding them. So, um, you know, I, I would say overall, we're doing pretty well, but yet there are lots and lots of challenges that we probably don't even see yet. That's understandable. Thank you, Dennis. Welcome. Thank you for that assessment. Yeah. How do our staff seem to be holding up through this? I mean, I know from a high school perspective. Yeah, from a high school perspective. Really well. Uh, they were up for the challenge from day one, and uh, as Michelle had mentioned, it gave us a, a really good opportunity to start really tearing apart our curriculum, which is a positive. I mean, if we, if we uh, look at some of the positives of this, that's one of the things that I think by the end of the year, we're going to have a, uh, the strongest high school curriculum we've had in a long time. Um, again, I, I think it's really important that we all understand that Student success, the, uh, the student success, the likelihood of success is having a qualified, effective teacher. So the face-to-face -face part is what we do, and again, we have to realize that that's a really smaller, a much smaller part of the equation. Which again. At the middle school, uh, they've been up for the challenge all along as well, um, but they really miss the students a lot. And, you know, in the interactions that I have with the staff, we, we connect about individual kids um, and, and how the phone calls are going and what other resources they might need. Um, you know, and there today was today was day one of the new format of learning, but they've been checking in all along. But I know that this is hard because we've asked them to completely change what they've been doing all along to a format that they've never done in the, quite this way before. And so I will say that they are um, amazing professors who are resilient and uh, are definitely doing a really stand up job through all of this. I, I would uh, concur with all this. The only thing that I would add is that this, this is a totally different uh, way of, of instruction and uh, for new learning and uh, for interacting with students. And I, and I think that the biggest uh, hurdle is is truly what you know, Dennis was mentioning before. How, how do we how do we really get a good indication of how students are learning? or understanding the material that that's been given to them, you know, and, and really assessing what's going on. And that's, 
I, I think that's the biggest struggle that some are having and you know how how they can truly provide that new new learning to, across the board for all students um, but once again you know great staff persevering through uh, the challenges here and asking a lot of great questions and coming up with great ideas and, and ways to uh, uh, or solutions for the problems that we're facing so great job and kudos to them here. Any other questions or comments? I just think that we need to compliment our staff. We really feel, and I think they're doing a great job. Thank you. Yes, great. Thank you so much for your hard work. And as teachers, this is the most challenging things I think you could face to abruptly stop that relationship that you've built for so many months and that's challenging in itself let alone with everything else so thank you for all your hard work and great job we'll be moving on to number four food service this is Grinnell. can everyone hear me so our food service staff has been doing an amazing job um delivering these meals and putting these meals together along with the care professional staff that we now have riding the buses. Um, we're delivering three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and at the same time uh, allowing a pickup as well for the, the family that chose not to have delivery. So far we have um, put together and uh, delivered and, and or picked up 7,434 meals since this has started. So that is uh, pretty significant. And I'd just like to thank all of them for their hard work and dedication throughout this. Thank you for that update. And agreed, thank you for all the work put into that. Any questions? And then the community comments. We're suspended by the Board of Education on April 6, 2020, for the duration of the COVID-19 public health emergency. For information on submitting a comment via email, please visit the COVID-19 information page on the district website. We'll be moving on to discussion and action. I can always to consider personnel recommendations. This evening, we have one resignation uh, before you. Janine Warnke, high school media center aide, two years of service. I'll entertain a motion that we accept resignation. Nathaniel Melton, I'll make that motion. Deb Olson, I will second. Thank you for your service and roll call vote, please. Robert Holwin, Nathaniel Melton. Yes. Kate McKinney. Yes. Deb Olson. Yes. Aaron Birch. Marcia Schurz. Yes. Paul Johnson. Yes. Paul Johnson. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Okay. Thank you. We'll be moving on to item B, the acceptance of donations. Two donations before you this evening from Baron Elect to the FFA, $100. From Spooner Elementary School, coats for kids, $200. I make a motion. Uh, Nathaniel Melton makes a motion that we accept these donations with a great big thank you for their generosity. Yes, agreed. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Robert Holland. Nathaniel Melton. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Deb Olson. Yes. Birch. Yes. Marcia Schurz. Yes. Paul Johnson.
Thank you. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I will. Nathaniel Melton will make that motion to adjourn. But before I do, I just want to say uh, it's been an honor to serve with you, Aaron and Robert. I've learned a lot from both of you guys. I appreciate your hard work. Uh, a lot of work that a lot of people didn't see behind the scenes. Uh, a lot of research and just thinking through things. Uh, it's just been really an honor to work with you guys. And uh, I just want to say thank you. So with that, I make my motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, Nathaniel. I'll second that motion. Uh, thank you all and roll call vote. Robert Mullen. Nathaniel Melton. Yes. Kate McKinney. Yes. Deb Olson. Yes, and thank you very much, Aaron. Aaron Birch. Yes. Marshall Schurz. Yes. Paul Johnson. Yes, and Aaron, you're still part of the family. Thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> you guys are going to do great things. If I had a gavel, I would say meeting adjourned, but I don't here. <laughs> the meeting is <laughs> should make one. I should have. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye. Good evening.